Okay, so tonight's going to be a great night. We are live. Uh, we've got a phenomenal guest tonight. I'm super excited. Since day one of our show, and this is episode number 76, since day one of our show, this is a gentleman that we've wanted to have on here uh, to talk about this very thing. So uh, let's cut right to it. First of all, I'm Brian Weiss. Thank you for watching the Day Tripper Photo Show tonight. This is episode number six, 76, as I said. I've got my good friends Gabriel and Darren here as well. We'll say hi to those guys in just a second. But first, Mr. Ron Clifford, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well. I'm not used to doing a show starting this late at night, but uh, my, mine do start at 9, so I, I guess it's not that much later. But, we uh, usually yeah, start at 10. So I know that. You kind of made a compromise for me there. You know, I'm getting <laughs> older. I need my beauty sleep. So. <laughs> uh, but I'm doing really well. Um, I've kind of hunkered down this week. Uh, I've been doing work, uh, web work and paperwork and all the things that photographers just loathe doing. That's what mm. I've been doing this week. Um, and getting extremely distracted by a lot of... Um, Things, noise. Uh, I have two monitors. I have a video going in one. I have my Gmail open. I have my uh, 16 different windows open on Google Plus, and then my Facebook app goes off, and my phone rings. And so um, I thought I thought that I would address that because that's one of my pet peeves. So so we'll get into that in a little while. Um, it's it's a great topic, and you know even Gabriel recently has uh, mentioned this in in, in quite a, quite a few times that we do have to make sure that we don't clutter ourselves up so much. I mean, we have to focus on one thing at a time. We have to pay attention to stuff to really absorb it. And how, how did you put it, Gabriel? You were talking about, um, I guess, when we were sending you 225 text messages in one night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've just um, been focusing a lot more on putting my attention towards what I'm putting my attention towards. Um, you know, and, and making sure that I'm not splitting my attention. Of course, as you were saying that, I was listening to you and sending a text message, but <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, I mean, mainly around you know when I'm with customers, um, giving them 100% of my attention, and when I'm with my family, I noticed that there was a dinner there where we were sitting there at the dinner table, um, watching a Netflix show sending text messages, you know, all night, and we hardly even spoke, and I'm like, okay, no, 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 this is ridiculous. You know, our son's five, he's only going to be five once, and we would have to really, you know, enjoy this family time. And uh, so, yeah, just sort of a thinning out uh, and a focusing of, of, uh, of intentions. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm glad you already brought that up. I think a lot of us are feeling that lately. There's, There's... Um, it just it seems to be that every generation and every month that goes by, there's more of that going on. So I look forward to talking about that. Me too. I'm, I'm really happy. I mean, I'm from Vermont, and, you know, when I was going through high school, we didn't have these distractions. It was, you know, 1984 through 89, 85 through 89, whatever it is, and there was no Internet. There was no um, confusion. I was in my room with no phone, and no TV, and I could play music, which was great. But it was a different time, and you were really able to focus differently. Although I think today kids do have a bit of a bit of an advantage having all the internet at their fingertips that they can study and, and do more with. But um, tonight's show will be talking about focus and investing in yourself and clearing out the noise and and really getting a little bit more involved in what you're doing. And I think that's good for everybody. So Ron, thank you extremely much for being on tonight's show. We really, really appreciate you being here. My pleasure, and congratulations on so many shows. I, I We do our shows once every two weeks, uh, partly for that reason, to keep everything under control. So, um, yeah, good good on you for getting it to this point. 70, 70, 76. 76 shows. Fantastic. Consecutive. I think we've missed one or two. That, that's about it. And that was Christmas and Boxing Day or something and like New that. Year's, yeah. New Year's, yeah. I'm going to be um, my... my beautiful wife is uh, in the next room and unfortunately it's had a bad cough for the last few days, like a really, really bad cough. So I'm going to be muting in and out um, when I'm not talking. So if, if my mouth starts moving, you don't hear anything, just remind me that I'm muted. Okay. And it's good that it's your beautiful wife that's sick because your ugly wife you've left somewhere else and apparently she's, she's doing just fine. So, uh, anyway. Well, 
I'm so wow. glad she doesn't watch this show so she can hear the <laughs> terrible things that you say about her. <laughs> well, no, it's a different person. Hey, Darren, how are you doing, man? We haven't uh, we haven't seen much of you lately. Except I'm from doing last good. Week. I'm just laying low. I'm letting you guys, you know, just uh, rev it up and uh, knock each other off. And <laughs> <laughs> next time Trish sees you, you're dead meat. But that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she does scare me. Uh, <laughs> All right, so thank you, everybody, for, for being on the show as well. Anything interesting that you've done this week, Darren? Any, any kind of cool stuff that you've been up to? Yeah, I get myself energized by picking causes and getting frustrated. And I did a post <laughs> on the community about JPEG, more because I know that there's some new people in the Day Tripper community. And Day Tripper is about teaching people how to go out and take great images. And there's just something somebody said about, oh, you couldn't do this with a JPEG image or, you know, push the JPEG image over the cliff or whatever, I'm thinking, no, you can do a lot with a JPEG image. You know, there's some pe people out there that may get intimidated or they hear it, you know, quote, expert, tell them they have to shoot in RAW. And, you know, my experience has been I've had situations where, you know, people have been told that. And they come in and say, well, I went on vacation and some expert told me to set my camera in RAW. And now I come back and, you know, I haven't got a computer that can do anything with and I can't see my photos, you know, and I can't get them printed. You know, they ran into all these problems because they really didn't understand. They just listened to And someone. we're running out of time. So we'll move on to the next topic. And uh, I'm just Exactly. <laughs> It's totally true, and there was a big debate about the conversation, you know, is it RAW or JPEG, what's more important? We've done a whole show on RAW, so technically if people really want to know our opinions on RAW versus JPEG, check out the show. I mean, it's I think it was one of our three-hour episodes, so... It just it just seems to me, I mean, I made all sorts of references to, you know, RAW is good in this situation and RAW is better in this situation, and it always seems to get around, of, you know, yeah, but I guess it's technical, and... I don't know why, but people who shoot in RAW, why they can't just say, you know, there are times when a JPEG file would be better than a RAW file. And I've almost never heard that said. Yeah, I, I, I'm totally in agreement with you, I, especially when I'm shooting events and things where it would be really handy just to hand images over that are already a bit more contrasty, have some vibrance, and that are immediately usable by the person receiving them. Mm -hmm. so and I was actually just going to say, I'm debating... Um, uh, the Day Tripper community, we're going to be shooting the Vaughn Film Festival coming up soon. We had the guys from the Vaughn Film Festival on our show a few weeks ago. And uh, I was debating on maybe shooting JPEG for that, but they work with RAW. And, you know, what, last time we shot their media launch, I asked if they want RAW or JPEG. They said, yeah, shoot RAW. So yeah. if they're able to manipulate them and work with them, then that's their burden to, to edit and get into, right? <laughs> that's right, because yeah. It really is. I mean, when you take 300 images in an event and you have to edit every single one of them, yes. JPEG kind of is, is better at that, but ultimately, you know, they're both good for different reasons. And if you want to get technical, it's like comparing a 70-200 f2.8 to a 7300 VR. 7200 no, f2.8 is a better lens. It doesn't mean you have to use it all the time. I just so, think if someone's doing a time lapse and they set their camera to RAW, they might not realize if they didn't do the math that their memory card's going to fill up after 45 minutes, and they've let the camera go for five hours. Well, Stephanie says that it was a very good post, Darren, and you definitely helped out uh, Elizabeth Barnes, who was confused about the whole debate between RAW versus JPEG. And, of course, now you're just revving up Ron Katz again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> RAW or bust. Both getting well, hyped up and, secondly, correct. <laughs> no, you have to shoot JPEG, and you have to do it on a Windows computer because Apple's no good. Oh, right, okay. So, moving on. Oh, moving James, on. Ron, your brother just posted here. He says... Uh, when you look at the finished product, does it really matter, RAW versus JPEG? You know what? Yeah. It's, very, it's valid. It's valid. So we've got a lot of stuff Moving to talk on. about tonight, Moving and uh, <laughs> so we're not going to get too, too wrapped up in that whole conversation. You know what? Maybe we'll do another show on it one day. For now, let's talk a little bit more about what we're talking about. Um, Gabriel, first of all, what happened last week? Yeah, sorry about missing last week. It was just March break is always crazy, and um, I, I just I had to go pick up my son from London. It was supposed to happen during the day. Then we had the storm, and then my wife's like, I don't want to drive out there. I'm like, don't worry, I'll go pick him up, and it just completely slipped my mind that it was Wednesday, so sorry about that. It's okay. Your right. son is more important. <laughs> no, it was it was just, you know, I, if I had remembered, I would have scheduled around it or had him sleep there another night or something like that. It just totally left my mind. So, what, with that weather that, forecast, you wouldn't have thought to let him sleep there another night anyways? <laughs> uh, it was 
it was the first time I've driven in a car thinking I may not make it. <laughs> it was no, it was the most terrifying experience I've ever had in a car. It was um, about every three minutes there was a car in the ditch or tracks of a car bouncing off the guardrail. I mean, the roads were so bad. It was it was unbelievable. But, um, you know, they didn't get bad until I was over halfway there and you couldn't turn around. And so, yeah, it was. Uh, I made it safe. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, pretty terrifying. I would have rather been home doing the show. <laughs> but wow. then after, and that was also right in the middle of a hockey tournament that I was shooting, a two-day hockey tournament <laughs> that I was shooting. And so I sort of shot the first day. And I uh, wasn't sure if I was going to make it back for the second day, but I was able to do it, so I was I was pretty happy. Yeah, you, I got the phone call. Brian, are you busy tomorrow? Can you <laughs> fill in for me? I'm not going to make it home. It's, yeah, well, it's because I was contracting for somebody, so I'm like, if it's so bad that I can't make it back, I have to make sure that that position is covered. But I was able to make it back, and uh, it was a great, it was a fun time. I shot um, 4,077 photos over yes. two days. I shot 18 hockey games uh, in two days, which was a super blast. And one thing that I've had my 5D Mark III for a while, but I shoot weddings and I shoot portraits and stuff. I've never really, really put it to the test, and I didn't realize until after when I was calling all the photos. I shot 4,077 photos, and out of 4,077 hockey photos, two were out of focus. Hmm. The autofocus system. the question, what mode of focus were you shooting in? So I was in, um, well, the 5D Mark III has like 700 focus modes. Um, <laughs> so the, <laughs> they have, so I was in servo, obviously, but they have like, are you going to be shooting something that's standing still and then moving? Are you going to be shooting, they have one specifically for like figure skating, one for football, one for... Um, like all these like fine tuned down little modes, so I put it into figure skating mode, and um, had it on. Um, so there's like sort of a center grouping where there's nine clusters, and it just auto focuses in those clusters, and you can move it around. And it was, I didn't even notice it when I was shooting. The the thing that I realized at the end is that while I was shooting, I was worrying about composition, not focus, not white balance, not like, you know, they say it's not the arrow, it's the Indian, but I'll tell you, when you have a when you have a heat-seeking thermonuclear arrow, it really <laughs> helps the Indian. <laughs> I mean, and so you can be sitting there, I had the 120 to 300 Sigma lens, and you can be sitting there with this lens for 10 hours a day and getting fast-paced hockey, and I'm worrying about the composition, not about whether I'm going to get the shot. I'm worrying about whether I'm going to get the shot that I want. Uh, and it was really um, eye-opening when the whole thing was done and I realized there's all these a aspects that people used to have to worry about about you know before there was manual focus before there was all these these other things and I was shooting in JPEG the whole the whole time which was it's the first time my camera's ever been put into JPEG um, you know and I knew that I would be able to just hand those those pictures over because it was constant consistent lighting so it was a lot of fun were you shooting in JPEG or raw? J JPEG the whole time um, and and the neat the, the, just really quickly I know I'm rambling a little bit but the other nice thing that I really um, have always enjoyed but really came to appreciate is on the Canon cameras you have the C1 C2 and C3 mm -hmm. and so I had two settings um, C3 for when the uh, the uh, skaters were far away and I wanted one specific setting and then C2 for when they came closer and I wanted that real close up shallow depth of field. Um, face shot, and so I could just switch back and forth between these two different modes and really capture some really compelling images that I wouldn't be able to get otherwise. So, I just muted Darren because I'm expecting him to be, you know, coming back about the custom modes and lack thereof <laughs> on his D800. And... No, I was just hey, going I'm, I'm, I was just going to jump in just so that Darren doesn't. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say I, I recently, in the last six months, got a, a Nikon D610, and I'm not going to compare um, Nikon's and Canons, but I just wanted to say, in in respect to that, I almost never uh, go into some of the auto focus modes. Uh, in previous times, I had a D70 and a D90 and a D7000, and I, and I really stuck to some very predictable autofocus modes. But I have to say, I've been overwhelmingly a, impressed with the like the 39 point um, kind of continuous 
autofocus that tracks things. And it was, like you say, I'm getting the number of images that are sharper are just substantial. And I was shocked at the quality. So um, I, I'm sure that the Mark III, I think even in, even in, in tests, really you know comes out on top. But um, in general, the newer cameras, the newer full frames are yeah. just unbelievable. Well, and it's really because the camera, everybody, you know, the gearheads are all like, oh, I got blah, 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 blah. But it's really when the tool starts getting out of your way, yeah. the technology gets to the point where the tool gets out of your way. You don't think about swinging the hammer. You just swing the hammer. Mm -hmm. And when they get good enough that they can get out of your way, then you can really focus on the things that matter. Nikon's yeah. had that group dynamic focus for for a while, and uh, Canon finally caught on to it. So it's you know good that they put it in the Mark III. I just wish Nikon would have smartened up and you know give you a customized set one, two, and three on a switch. Uh, all their things are in menus, which are you know pain in the butt to get at, and you can't reset them to your settings. They always go to Canons, and you know you guys have heard my rant before, so. <laughs> Well, all I want is a DSLR that works when I have my gloves on. Yeah. <laughs> 25 below, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we've seen that photo. I'm going to yeah. skip over here to the Q&A for a quick second. Uh, Eileen O'Sullivan, she says she's back. It's been a while. Glad to be back. Well, glad you are back. Ooh, Thank Eileen. you very much, Eileen. Um, and she's asking, what if you don't have a car? Love traveling. Um, We'll be taking more day trips more this summer. Living in Ontario, it's a great place to live and breathe and see. I agree. I absolutely love it here. Um, it keeps jumping around here. Uh, when you're taking a few cameras, lenses, etc., how do you keep safe with you doing things in a day? Um, well, we, good question. We hire a driver when we go to Algonquin. We have a bus. The bus has a driver so that we're not worrying about driving a vehicle. And uh, we, you know, tell people, you know, before you're, you know, look both ways before you cross the road. Yeah, good point. No, it's true. Like when we're when we're doing things with Daytrip or Photo, usually if we have enough people, we have a vehicle that's driven by, you know, a company and so on. So uh, that's the mobile classroom we use. It does make it a lot easier. Absolutely. It, until it drives off the road, then we got to push it back on. But <laughs> No, we don't conversation. Have those yeah. No, we don't have that. Um, and Stephanie says, CAA employees advice. Stephanie works for CAA. She goes, never go west in a storm. Worst plan uh -huh. ever. When we left Toronto, we were doing 120 on dry roads. And, I mean, it didn't start getting bad till Didn't 12. you listen to the forecast? I mean, the road between Toronto and Sarnia and London and that whole area, that's always the worst wow. areas. You know, you look at the forecast. If they're calling for snow, it's right. a bad area. I just, I just wanted to get my son back. You know, I was just like, all right, we'll just go pick him up. I didn't even think about it. And it's like when you see 18-wheelers facing the wrong way. Yeah, mm. you're a little worried. Well, James even <laughs> piped up and said that he drove to Guelph the next morning. It wasn't snowing, but the Highway 407 and 401 were over 50% ice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I could have planned that better. But uh, it, all, it all ended out well, so I'm glad. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. And I'm glad you're safe, and I'm glad you're back this week. And I'm so excited now that we can get into the meat potatoes of this night's conversation. Um, I'm really, really interested in what you have to say, Ron. So let's take a little break away from um, this pre-chat little thing that we're doing. Yeah. But before we do that, I'm just going to quickly mention to folks, if you're watching the show and you're watching us on YouTube after the fact, click like, subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. Be a part of what we're doing when you're watching it live right now with the Q&A app. Feel free to ask us any question you like. If something comes up that you know tweaks an interest or you know you have a, a specific question about, use the Q&A app on our show right now, and we are here to answer it. We see it live in real time. So everybody, thank you for watching. And, yes, weather is weird, Eileen. We've had some crazy weather this year. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Ron, mi amigo. Okay, so Where I explained this all started you, from. Yeah, this, this all started a while ago when I found that I, I tried to make plans, and it could be months before I looked back and I said, you know what, I haven't gotten anything done in months. I, I, I set out and I planned, and I, I want to qualify myself at the beginning as when I discuss this, I'm not an expert at um, filtering out noise. In fact, uh, uh, as a photographer, I have something called ADD, and that's anything distracts the distracted. <laughs> um, and so 
I think a lot of us creative people, especially photographers for some reason, have this real um, uh, ability to get distracted easily and try to follow too many things at once. It, to the detriment of ourselves, we're capable of so much more. And um, I think with, with this new age, we're walking around, we're on our phones all the time, things are happening. Um, I think we've slowly moved into an area where we don't even realize how much noise is coming into our head at any one time. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of it is completely unnecessary. And, and I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a mission. Let's, let's say I'm on a mission to control the noise. And so I, I really wanted to talk about that because I also believe that creativity happens when you separate yourself from all of that. Um, when you're able to quiet down, when you're able to change environments, um, when you're able to leave the same old, same old. And for us, the noise has become the same old, same old. We get up in the morning, we check our emails, the computers on, the phone's ringing, and it doesn't stop until we shut it all down at the end of the day. Very true. And uh, yeah, and interject anytime if you have anything that's happened recently where you, you can relate to that. Uh, and so what the other thing that I wanted to say is because I have ADD, uh, anything distracts the distracted, I'm developing something now called NDF, and that's nothing distracts the focused. And so if you've ever been around somebody who, who actually does have uh, an ADD or an ADHD condition, and they're in a situation where there's a lot of stimuli and they're uninterested, you cannot get them to sit still. It's actually physiologically impossible. You would be better off trying to put a bowling ball, you know, into into the sinkhole, than to get someone with ADD or ADHD to uh, sit still in one place for a length of time, unless and there's always an unless, unless you can introduce something to them that causes what's called hyperfocus. Mm. Um, Gabriel, you uh, when you were younger, you played a lot of games. Um, uh, you were a gamer, and uh, thus the, the conversation, I'm sure you're going to bring up about Titanfall, but um, when you're involved in a, a game, and we see this amongst our young kids, we get into a zone, much like we did when we were watching our cartoons, where it didn't matter what somebody said to you or did. You, there could literally be a tornado, and you wouldn't notice until the house fell off. I think there's something to be said about that that ability to focus that way without getting distracted in spite of being someone who's prone to distraction. It's kind of a contradiction, you would think, right? That's There's really sad, true. talking to a friend of mine who uh, deals in that, that industry. She was saying that uh, a lot of um, hockey goalies are, are ADD because they can't focus on anything, but as soon as they get in that net, they get hyper-focused on that puck. Yeah. And, and nothing else, yeah, everything else disappears. Yeah. And it's funny that uh, Laurie Cloutier just says, uh, we are all squirrels at heart. Yes. And this, this is kind of a running joke that we have on the show, is every time we get distracted, every time, you know, we're, we want to talk about so many things at once, we just go, squirrel, and like, oh, oh look, squirrel, this is so distracting. Um, and, of course, James says, oh, look, something, something shiny. So yeah. it, it's true. It happens to everybody. And so I've had periods lately where I've had, had times – you know, weeks or hours or days of high productivity where I was able to turn the noise down intentionally, make a decision, turn the noise down, and I suddenly became this productivity machine that wasn't staying up until midnight, that, that wasn't um, under so much stress. I was just in this zone. And so I began to ask myself, I, I see all kinds of people out there. Most of them are playing that gerbil on a wheel game and some of them are becoming highly successful while we're all running. And so the people that were becoming highly successful have mastered a few things. And it's not because I read a number of books on the topic. It's just from observation and from being an educator and dealing with people in education, trying to get them to focus, trying to bring them back on track, that I realized that we ourselves are responsible for taking that under control. And I, I don't mean to sound trite, but... We don't even know it. We don't know it's us that's got to get grab the reins. Nobody's going to come alongside us and, and set the record straight until we're in a position where we can say, yeah, you know what? I can relate to that. I'm just doing everything and getting nothing done. And, and that's I, the difference I, between working hard and working smart. 
That's right. You always hear people say you have to work smart, where I find myself um, with notes and, you know, paper everywhere and, you know, finding myself, I'm a great paper shuffler, but as far as getting stuff done, I have a really hard time. And that's where the, uh, as you say, the ADD comes in. It's, it's, tip it's really difficult to focus, and I do find um, I'm constantly looking at 10, 12 things at once. And, and this is a, something, again, that Gabriel mentioned. There was a, a, a video that you watched where he was talking about focusing on a specific thing and stop worrying about all the clutter. And, and it's like you said, you know, I'm up till 4 o'clock every day because I find myself stimulated with the phone and with the this and with the that. And, of course, you know, poor Shelly, my wife, has to, you know, deal with all that. And I wish there was a way that I could literally just shut it off and still find myself, you know, pushing Day Tripper forward and pushing my own personal self forward and, and still keeping on top of all the things I need to keep on top of. It's, it's not easy. Well, I'm glad you put it that way because I want to I wanna present a challenge. And I want I want everyone that's willing to try a couple of things. Not I don't want you to change your whole world. I don't want you to make a, a big deal about it. But if we're creative people, we're photographers, we're running businesses. Some of us are working one full time job while building a photography business. And to you, I I give you praise because that's the hardest thing in the world. And um, pushing through that requires a lot of energy and a lot of focus. And if you're distracted, it's going to take a lot longer than it should. So I want to I want to present a couple of ideas and I want to, to two main ideas really one is that we have to look at our daily routine and ask ourselves when we're when we do something the question why three letters why uh, this this was a it's like the angel saying one day when I was reading a book called the power of negative thinking and it's by an author named Bob Knight and the the book title caught me, like it just caught me, it distracted me right to focus. It was like, what? The power of negative thinking is completely opposite to what I believe. And I thought, well, i got to hear what that guy's got to say. And so I got my wife to download it onto her, her Kobo. And, and really his point isn't the power of negative thinking, but the power of critical thinking. And what I gleaned most from it is the power of why. Um, if someone says to you, oh, it'll be better tomorrow, you know, things always get better in time, ask the question, why? If your world is kind of falling apart and things are out of order and you can't get any focus, ask yourself, why? When you open your email program first thing in the morning, ask yourself, why? Because by asking that question before you do things, you're going to begin to siphon things that are really important and things that we only think are really important. I had that discussion over the supper table tonight. Wife said, you know, uh, how was your day today? I said, ah, uh, kind of a crappy day in some ways. And she says, well, you know, tomorrow will be better. I said, how do you know tomorrow will be better? Tomorrow's going to be different. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be any better. And sometimes it's just our perspective on how we look at things as to whether or not it is better or it's worse. Uh, because, you know, every morning the sun rises. We can't see it sometimes because it's a cloudy day for us. But I mean, it rises every day and it sets every day. So sometimes we just need to, you know, as photographers, you know, back off and take a different perspective. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I love each new day that way, especially at the end of a long day when you're just done. <laughs> you're just done. So I'll, I want you to, that's one of my challenges to ask yourself why you've got all these things lined up and in place and we, uh, we enjoy our busyness. Uh, North American culture actually brags about being busy. Mm -hmm. um, I, w I was at uh, a, a, a service on Sunday, and, and the, the pastor actually brought up my favorite topic. It was this one. And I thought, how, how ironic is that that he's bringing this up? But he said, you never go down the street and somebody says, oh, I've been, I've been really slothful today. I've been really lazy, you know. We don't, we don't revel in that, but we go and we say, oh, I, I've been so busy, you know, I've got all this to do and that to do, and I was up till midnight and I got up at four, and in a very prideful way, and, and it's actually a bit destructive to us, creatively. And so mm -hmm. um, I want to leave you with the, that one question first is why. Ask yourself why. If you make statements like it's going to be better tomorrow morning, ask yourself why, and then put a plan in place.
Um, and that's really the crux of it. For us technological people, the next challenge I have for you is go out to the coffee shop and accidentally leave this on home on purpose. Don't bring your iPad. Bring your me pad. See this? <laughs> See this? I know this is an antique. It was probably made in 1980-something. Um, <laughs> Gabriel, this it here, looks like an iPad, only... Yeah, it's what? different. The difference <laughs> is you have to use a pen that actually has ink in it. So, so it's like a downgraded stylus. Yeah, but <laughs> what it does is it creates focus. Think about it. If I bring this with me, I bring the world with me. If I bring my laptop with me, I bring the world with me. If I bring this with me, I have to talk to myself. And so we had, uh, as one of our early guests on Life Through the Lens, and then again on the Photoshop show, uh, a fantastic artist and photographer named John Paul Capnagle. And he came on it, and, and one of the things he talked about was writing his ideas down. He did a TED Talk, too, which is fantastic. Um, if you want to look it up, I don't have the link for it. But Actually, that's what it was that Gabriel was watching, a TED Talk. It made me think of that as well. Excellent, excellent resource, these things. Yeah, the TED Talks are incredible. And so what I gleaned from, from having him on the shows was that, that he writes things down as they come to him, even little drawings about pictures that might present themselves to him, compositions that he thinks about, um, it doesn't come naturally at first. It's a lot of work at first because it's not natural for us anymore to carry our notepad and our pen with us. Um, but I find when I go for my coffee, I always take a break. There you go. I take a break for my coffee and now I bring the notepad and I don't always bring the Chromebook. Or if I bring the Chromebook, I make an intentional, now it's time to shut that down, put it away and take out the pad and get some focus. You know, it's funny, and I always use the paper, and Gabe actually kind of teases me sometimes, because that does help me focus on what I'm talking about. <laughs> if I'm on my phone, I find... Oh, it's, it's actually funny. Somebody made a comment of it. Um, uh, actually, it was James. He says, when I'm on the net, I start to look up one thing, and then an hour later, I finally find... <laughs> you go back to what you were looking up and find it again. Yeah. It's true. Like you, you get so distracted with so many different things... And Mark says that the irony he, isn't wasted on him that he's listening to our show right now while working on his finances. You know, like that's, it's, that's one, it's thing, one thing I didn't like culture. One thing I didn't like about my switch to Google mm -hmm. is that my calendar is on Google, so that I have to be logged in in order to see my calendar. A lot of things I've got to refer back to my calendar for, and then every time you know, a little bell goes ding, another message ding. Yeah, isn't that another cool? Ding. ding. That, you can Can I those, just? Right? See my calendar without all this other distracting stuff. The little Google Plus red number I, up I've in the corner. I've turned off the sound of that. I still see it. But I've turned off the sound. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely. It's like, oh, somebody wants to say something. Oh, you know, somebody commented yeah. on my post. I'm addicted to that. I am. They have and, and um, apps, uh, like Google, Google Apps, and there's extensions. Um, I think one of them is called Leave Me Alone or something like that. When you activate it, it's, it's like a notepad thing, and it just deactivates everything else on your computer. It mutes everything, and you can say, okay, you know, run this for 20 minutes. So for 20 minutes, nothing will distract you, nothing will bother you. And I've gotten to the point where um, I have a dual monitor system, and I turn off one of my monitors, and I go to YouTube, and if you punch in calming music on YouTube, there are three-hour playlists of just calming music that's actually scientifically designed to help you focus. And I'll have that playing on in the background, and I'll just have one screen set up in full screen on my one monitor and then just focus on one thing at a time. One of the things that I teach my students in my creative, when I do a creative mentorship, it's called Enhancing Creativity. And I just noticed Marjorie's here. She's a, a former student. Hi, Marjorie. Um, is the idea of being intentional, um, being absolutely intentional. As photographers, most of us begin by falling in love with this little tool that takes pictures, and we're, we're just addicted to this capturing moments, and it's a wonderful thing. As we get better, 
we start seeing work of others and we start seeing our own work grow, we say, I want to take pictures like X or like Y. And you say, how can I take pictures like X or like Y? And the person taking those probably did them very intentionally if we look at them. Um, I talked about that again last night, about being very intentional about my processing. So the third point in, in that, uh, going through things, is first take responsibility for the busyness in your life. It's something we do to ourselves and we take pride in it. Uh, get a notepad. and I can't overstate this. This is not a trite thing. Bring your notepad and your pen. Uh, ideas, plans, whatever, I don't care how messy the writing is, start putting in a book. And I have a collection of very similar books now with, with I can go back through and, and refresh my ideas. And then be intentional. Um, be intentional with your photography or with using your notebook. Take on this, this idea that although life presents itself to us as photographers very often, it's because we intentionally put ourselves in a place to receive it. I, I took a picture, uh, several pictures recently, but I've been up north taking pictures of our snowy Ontario, and it's been like an Arctic wonderland this year. And, and I've been rewarded with some um, really, really pleasing shots. And one of the reasons that's happened isn't necessarily because I'm an experienced photographer, although I'm sure some of that goes into it, but because I've been very intentional about where I want to be, when I want to be there, and what I want to capture. And when I place myself into that environment, there's a really good chance I'm going to be rewarded with something. And so when I say, how did that person get that image, there's a really good chance they did that. Mm -hmm. ahead of me, you know? And so I'm learning that more and more every day. There's the old saying, I believe strongly in luck, and I find the harder I work, the more of it I have. Exactly. <laughs> Martin just pipes up and says, uh, photography as a hobby can be very distracting when it's not your income source. It can be difficult to balance with other priorities, business and personal and so on. Oh, and by the way, Martin really liked your show last night too, Ron. He, oh, thank uh, he you, made Martin. a comment of that. Um, and it, it's absolutely true. Like, Ron, you were gracious enough to invite me out for uh, a shoot with you and Hark and Blake and those guys. And it was excellent. I was... A little bit overwhelmed. I mean, the the caliber of photographer that was there was was amazing, and I felt like I was this little guy hanging out with these giants. And um, I found myself kind of sitting back a little bit, not really taking any pictures and watching everybody else do their thing and paying attention to what you're doing, and what Blake's doing, and what um, Elena's doing, and everybody else. And I came home. I think I had like ten photos that I actually took that night. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I realized at that point, like you have to make yourself do something. You have to put yourself in a position and, and not just kind of watch what's going on around you, but actually tell yourself, I want to make this photo. What will make this experience summed up in a photo? And make yourself do it. Give yourself that specific goal. And it's kind of in line with what you're talking about. Yeah. And I know uh, later on in the show you're going to be talking about um, something you do on the Day Tripper, and that is you, you give an assignment every week, a, a topical assignment, and you offer a uh, you know, an award for first place for the people that, that contribute. So we'll, we're, we're going to move on to that, but that's one of the ways to gain focus. I'm not for or against any self-assignments, not 365s or 52 weeks or self-assignments. I'm for them if your character matches them, and I'm against them if it's going to hurt your creativity. It's really simple. I'm not cut and dry on the topic. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a 365. I only got halfway through it. But that 165 whatever days I did probably did more for, for me photographically than a whole bunch of videos that I would have watched or, or some classes I would have took or a book I would have bought. It, it put the camera in front of my face and it turned up the burners. It, it made me accountable. And so for me, it was very helpful, although I couldn't complete it because I had much more pressing things like running a business and paying bills to do. I couldn't keep doing that. Um, yeah, Eileen says it best. Balance is key. Yeah. And so the other thing comes to if, if you want to do this thing we call photography as a business, and I know some people here do it already, do it part-time, or want to do it, I, I kind of want to address that in regard to the idea of focus. Social media is a great thing for getting yourself out there, 
building a community, finding relationships, and being approved. I admit I love the approval I get from social media. It, it, it's a boost, but it's a distraction. And I found that over the last year, I've spent less time actually engaging on social media and more time working on business plans, more time working on putting things together on paper, more times on deciding exactly what direction I want to move into and then how I'm going to do it. So if you're thinking about running photography as a business, you're going to need focus. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that I really want to leave you with, and we can really talk about this further, but the, these are the keys that I really wanted to leave you with, is find someone to help keep you accountable to a plan. Um, when we're accountable, we have an incentive to force ourselves to keep our commitments. Part of being in a training program or a mentorship or an educational format like a college is we're accountable to teachers, to mentors, to professors, to bosses. When we're self-employed, we lose that accountability. It's the reason why it's so hard as a self-employed person to move ahead with any focus. Mm -hmm. So find yourself somebody who knows more about something than you. Like I have a mentor who understands marketing. And I have somebody that I, I, I use it, uh, for bookkeeping. I don't do I'm don't I'm not going there. I'm not doing bookkeeping. So one of the things that I teach people is it's not as important to know what your strengths are as it is to know what your weaknesses are. Nobody needs to tell you, Brian, you're you're a gifted educator. You know that. You, that's your passion. It's in your heart. And Thank so that's you. what you do. But there's things you know about yourself that you don't do so well. And you got to make a choice. Either, either invest time that you might not have to get better at that thing that may not have worked for the last 40 years, or find someone to help you. And that's who's sitting beside you right now. <laughs> and and it's, it's absolutely true. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. And thank you for the compliment. It's very nice of you to say, coming from you, that means a lot more than you probably think. Um, but without Gabriel and Darren on board with Day Tripper, it would be a completely different thing. I mean, these guys are experts in what they do. Uh, they lend a lot to what I do. And there is accountability because of that. Like, yes, I, I get in uh, sometimes from these guys because, you know, I don't hold up my end of the bargain or, you know, it goes both ways. And, and having a group of people that you can fall back on, uh, it's just, it's a blessing. So as much as, you know, thank you for the compliment, but Day Tripper Photo has become a lot more than just Brian. It's Gabriel and, and Darren and all the other instructors and people who have been with us beforehand and uh, yes it's amazing having people who have these skills that you can say okay Darren you are like absolutely incredible for knowledge and you know everything about everything so Darren you please give me some wordage on this and Gabriel you're like Mr. IT I need help with my website and you know with the apps and with all the other things that we have on the go and, and Gabe just steps right up and gets things done in a better way than I ever thought I could so it's it's a really good thing having people that you can have to fall back on you're absolutely right Yeah, uh, uh, that's it's such an important key for some of us it becomes our spouse for some of us we have to reach outside that that zone that range um, there's some things, obviously, in a marriage, there's no fly zones. You just don't go into that territory. So you find somebody that, that can fill that void for you in a business way. Mm -hmm. And and that, in, in the last two years, has been an immense boon to my ability to begin to move forward. And like I say, don't think that I'm saying that I've got it together and I've, I've, I've arrived at anything. I'm just working toward it, and I've had seasons of better success than I had in the past. Well said. Well said. Um, Stephanie actually also says it's kind of like what Darren said a few shows back. Goals without deadlines are just dreams. Yes. And it's, it's true. So true. Yeah. You have to give yourself deadlines. You have to, you know, be accountable, as you say. And it um, also, also has to be measurable. You know, so we've got to go, and Ron was saying, you know, track your progress. Go back and review it again. So you were doing that with your with your books. You go back in, you review them, and you make you make a new one. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And 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 our goals, our goals and our projections are a bit of shifting sand because we don't control the the universe. We only control our actions and what happens, uh, our reactions to what happens around us. So, our goals are a bit of sifting sand. We have to understand that we may not always make our goals in perfect order. In fact, usually success is what happens while you're trying to reach another goal. 
You know, it's it's funny that way. And creativity is like that. And I want to roll this all back around to the idea of creativity. Um, one of my gifts in life is to draw creativity out of other people, uh, to bring their creativity and their confidence, to encourage them to explore it. And this idea of the noise around us is a creativity killer. It absolutely annihilates our ability to be creative and to have any amount of confidence to go out and do. And so um, to, to bring this all into a nutshell, our minds need space to play. And it can't do it while it's being bombarded by life events all the time. Mm -hmm. There are times when great ideas come from being busy and being distracted. I won't, that, I mean, it's happened. But more often, we get great ideas in that moment just before we're asleep. Or when we're taking a walk, in the shower, mm -hmm. singing in the car. Oftentimes, we can't write them in our notebook, right? Unless we get a waterproof pen and plastic. Or, uh, Unless we're Gabriel, we can just say, OK, Google now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you just woke up my phone. <laughs> The technology. No, I love technology. I, I think it's a fantastic tool, and we need to take control of it and have it stop controlling us. Exactly. That's exactly. my platform. Yeah. And the reason I'm on that platform is for creativity's sake, for the sake of our expression to move into that artistic zone that gets us past just taking pictures to shooting great pictures. A just question on, on that point, just a quick question. Um, you find, like, my, I'm a big music guy. I used to play in bands, I play the drums, and I know you play guitar and you're a music guy as well, Ron. Um, I find music today to be very cluttered, filled with a lot of other styles of music, filled with, you know, copying other people's stuff and so on, where back in the day, back in the day, um, you know, you had real original music. Do you think partially this is because of that same thing? You find musicians today are so cluttered with everybody else's music, that they're not focusing on what their real talent is able to bring them? Yeah, I, I think you're seeing that in music, in art, in photography. Um, we see it in the creative fields. Um, in the 16th century, there was a, a and, and don't quote me on, on the exact dates, but there's a boon of like uh, Renaissance paintings that have a similar feel to them, but artists mastered a, a certain type of painting. I don't think that's going to happen today. We're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, that's good. In some ways, it's very bad. We've lost the, and this is why I love the idea of mentorship, we've lost that master-apprentice role. We've lost that ability to focus down on one discipline and get really good at it. Mm -hmm. It's funny, actually. Um, yesterday, I did a talk for the New Market Garden Club. And my main topic of discussion is focus on what you don't like so you will learn what you do like. Well, not focus on what you don't like, but know what you don't like so you can really focus on what you do like. And just to, it's kind of along the same lines where I know I don't shoot wedding photography. I don't like shooting portraits. It's not my thing. I don't enjoy it. So I can focus on urban exploration or um, the zombie walk and the things that I do like. And I give myself permission to say, this is me. It's okay that this is me. I don't have to do all this other stuff. Yeah. And uh, that was a big eye-opening moment for me when I finally realized that, you know, I like this look. I have a look. I'm happy to have a look. I'm not one of those guys that want to do everything and, and don't want to be identifiable. I actually enjoy being identifiable. Um, but that's me. So is that kind of also in line with what you're saying? Oh, it is absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I, I spoke about last night, I was doing a demonstration. We mentioned the show. I'll just bring it up. I was doing a demonstration about my creative process and um, the why behind what I do. We, we can all have Lightroom and Photoshop and Nick plugins and Online plugins, and we can have 6,000 lenses and 5,000 gadgets and never take a good picture mm -hmm. and never produce a good piece of post-processing until we ask ourselves why. We're back to that question. Yep. So I discussed that last night, but one of the things I discussed was my discovery of discovering my voice in my images, certain colors I was prone to use or enhance, certain looks, even certain compositions that start repeating themselves over and over again. And so I agree, um, you don't have to have a style or even want to find it. 
but it'll find you eventually if you shoot enough. Yeah. 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 I heard, um, I can't remember, some photographer, Adams, some Adams guy, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, with or <laughs> something, yeah, easel. Yeah. Or something easily. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's very little known. I don't know if we should really, really talk about. It. He's known for a quote: "There's nothing worse than a sharp image of a fuzzy concept." <laughs> and yeah, I put. Um, I think it was last week. I put up a post on uh, on our day tripper photo website in the tips and tricks section. It says, uh, and it's called three things. Um, three things to think about before you press that shutter. And the number one is why. Um, you know, in this day and age of camera phones, and uh, I think they're, they're saying there's more pictures taken every day in a single day than was produced in the history of humankind up until like 95 or something like yeah. that. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, I take 15 to 20 pictures a day, but before I press that button, every single time I'm asking myself, Exactly your point. Why am I taking this picture? You know, what what am I trying to say? What message am I trying to put across? And is there a better way that I can do it? One of the criticisms that I've always heard of digital is that you know, film made you slow down. Well, slowing down is a choice. Yes. And you can just yeah, you can decide to make that choice with digital, uh, or you can just throw it in auto and rapid fire. Um, so yeah, you're right, and that's that's very timely. That, uh, I'm glad you brought up a, a quote. I have a favorite quote, and uh, I have it on on my my website in a couple of places. But um, what it is is by a man named Eugene H. Peterson, and he says, "The great masters of imagination do not make things out of thin air. They direct our attention to what is right before our eyes. With their help, we see it not as commonplace, but as magnificent; not as time worn, but as timeless." And what I love about that, he's talking about that the masters are directing our attention to what is right before our eyes. And we won't ever see it until we focus. It's true. Yeah. And that was, that was part of what I, the realization that I came to during that dinner where uh, my wife and son and I had spent 15 minutes next to each other without paying any attention to each other. And uh, that TED Talk that I saw, then I, I listened to another fantastic TED Talk today on listening, um, where they recommend just have three minutes a day of complete silence. And that helps reset your listening ability. They got into the science of how many, how many things your brain can focus on. Your, focus, your brain can focus on 1.6 conversations at a time, and that's it. So if you're in a conversation and you hear four other conversations going on in the background, you're being pulled out of the conversation that you're in and really focusing on being where you are. You know, just be where you are. And that's the biggest thing. I think that's the biggest thing that we have a problem with this nowadays. And it's even worse as being photographers because there's so many new mediums that are coming out nowadays that are photography based. So it's like, hey, there's Facebook. Okay, well let's share photos there. And there's Google Plus and then there's Instagram and then there's Pinterest and then there's and as photographers we feel like we need to be on all of them and they are all important. But each one takes ten minutes, but there's thirty of them. Mm -hmm. Right. And we can spend six hours a day on them. Like an hour each. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's also a big problem for me as well because you know running day Tripper Photo, it's a small little business. It's it's the three of us and me, and you know, without putting that word out to the right people, without showing people, hey, look, mm -hmm. we're we're fun guys. We love photography. We give great passion on our day trips, and you know, we go to some cool places that you can't get to otherwise. And we have Sigma lenses and all this stuff, and it's all in my head. I'm so excited. I got to tell the world. I got to tell the world. And I go home and I jump onto Google Plus and I answer all the questions on Google Plus, and I go onto Facebook and I answer all the questions on Facebook, and I'm getting texts all the time from people, you know, I need this lens, can you put it aside for me? And, and I work at Henry's full time, and of course, Shelly, my wife, is like uber understanding more than I, I ever thought she would be with all of this noise coming at me all the time. And unfortunately, and you know, she'll probably come in here in a couple seconds if she can hear me and smack me in the head when I say this, but she does get kind of pushed aside unfairly, and it's not good for me to do that. So I think having this conversation and, and helping myself focus nicely is uh, is really, really, really valuable. So 
thank you for coming on our show today, Ron, and, and talking to us about this and reminding us that we should really focus a little bit more and pay attention to what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. I think it's it's an accepted evil. It's it's you know, you see in every single commercial, life is faster these days, life is busy, life is that, life is that. Well, that's a decision. You know, just like whether we're gonna take our time with digital. It's it's a decision as to how busy we're gonna let our lives be. Mm -hmm. And we can we can decide to make it different or handle it differently. Yeah. So there will be no show next week. We're going to take the week off. And, uh, <laughs> and we're just going to focus. We're all just going to meditate. Yeah, and we're all meditating on the show next week. Just, just because it's possible to do all this stuff doesn't mean that you always have to. You know, sometimes you should just, you know, take a break. You know, when the cell phone buzzes and rings and there's a message, you don't have to answer it. You don't have to look. You know, it's mm -hmm. okay to let it go for a while, especially if you're in your car. Could not agree you. more. They're going to charge you three hundred dollars. <laughs> it is so hard, though. I mean, it's it's so much easier said than done. It really yeah. is. Well, and, and it's, it's and it's the science. You know, there was a, another another fantastic TED talk on it where when you get an email notification, you actually get a dopamine dopamine hit, which is yeah. a drug that your body gives out when you eat and when you. Oh, hold on, that little red light just went on. Hold on, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so you you actually get a physical pleasure when you when the phone rings, when you get an email, and your it's your it's our instinctual, it, it's our it's our lizard brain saying, hey, there's something we should be paying attention to, and your body releases this drug that makes you feel good. Yep. And and I have to admit, I'm addicted to that. I'm addicted to it. Mm -hmm. I love when somebody plus one's a photo. I love when. You know, I get a comment on on Facebook saying that they like this or they like that. It's it's a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. But now that it's been happening for so long, I should really learn to funnel it down and just kind of focus. I don't mean I'm like, getting adulation all the time. I'm just saying, you know, day trippers been going since 2008. <laughs> now that everybody loves me. Yeah, <laughs> far from it. Um, <laughs> since since 2008, I've been doing this, so I figure by now I should be used to it. I'm gonna quickly jump over to some of the Q&A. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, Eileen, thank you so much for being for contributing as much as you are. Um, she does like doing a variety, and, and now she's more confident. She goes, it's true, Ron, you, you do find your style, so that's really cool. And yeah, music, it's true. Uh, there's so much junk these days, and, you know, I remember listening to, I don't know, some really great stuff in the back, in the days, Super Tramp, uh, Zeppelin, all these music, where these guys would literally go into a studio for two weeks at a time and not come out until they had this genius piece of art. They weren't bothered by anybody. Of course, they were probably doing ridiculous drugs, but <laughs> who knows? Uh, focusing enhancement, enhancement yes. products. Yeah, squirrel. <laughs> um, oh, and Gary asks you, Ron. He goes, he's wondering when the Ron Clifford channel is going to start. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> not anytime soon, Gary. <laughs> Um, and Marjorie says she's so glad she caught this. Many, many truths. Intent is key. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you caught this as well, Marjorie. Um, James, when I started to ask myself why before clicking the shutter, then I had a lot less photos in the trash bin. There's another side effect. There's a nice benefit there. You know, you're thinking a little bit more before you shoot, so you don't come back with so much useless stuff that you're not going to do anything with. And, of course, James also said hi to Josh that was sitting behind you there for a couple of seconds. Yeah, he's right. Josh, your son. Now, and that's actually a question I had for you. Josh, uh, Blake was hanging out with Josh a little while ago, and he mentioned how Josh did these edits and how he was so fast with editing in Photoshop and so intricate and being able to change one hair strand from another color, and it's just brilliant. So this whole thing, having you and Josh and Holly and all the all the folks in your family who are all into photography, that's got to be a huge asset for you. I, I don't know. I, you know. It's the way life is. It's not something I think about that much. I'm really fortunate to have very gifted kids, um, and they're all pretty much excited about uh, creative pursuits. They are. They love the outdoors. They like nature. If I say trip, they say when. You know. Um, awesome. That's great. So it's it's wonderful. Now Josh is in Humber College. He's studying photography. Um, for him, he's learning a lot of this stuff outside of my realm. Like he's getting a lot, a lot better. And I can't take credit for that. That's because he's studying under some excellent teachers at Humber as well. So um, his his learning curve has just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. Well, he can absorb it. He's he's an excellent photographer, and I'm I'm really happy I got to know him as well. Okay, so let's make a shift. Thank you for being here, Ron. Thank you for bringing all this to our attention and helping us think about 
you know, focusing a little bit more. And this, since our conversations with Gabriel and, you know, Darren and I chatting to each other all night long and Gabe catching in uh, five hours later with 300 messages gone by. And, you know, it's true. We really have to stop the chatter, stop the noise. Um, let's see what Mark says here. Sometimes on the weekend when I'm with family and friends and my phone rings, I let it go to voicemail. There are times when I'm simply not available. Yeah. Again, we have to give ourselves sort of forgotten that. I was actually thinking about hanging up one of those old telephones where you have to, you know, <laughs> you know, do that Anybody for, for with an eight or a zero in their number. Yeah, no voicemail. But actually, if somebody called you and you're on the phone, they got a busy signal. I don't That's think so my kids know what that is. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, but it's all about choice. Just because the phone rings, you don't have to answer it. Yeah. yeah. My um, son never used a landline dopamine thing you were talking about. You automatically jump for the phone. But thank you, Brian, for having me on it and allowing me to kind of get on my soapbox about things that, that really matter to me, things that really make a difference, not just to myself, but to people that I'm fortunate enough to spend some time with and, and work at, with teaching. So, Well, I, I'm sure uh, the viewers that have watched tonight will all feel the same. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's get to some other fun stuff. And you mentioned earlier that we do these photo challenges. And this week's photo challenge was kind of wide open. We, we left it up to anybody to take any kind of photo, but you had to show us how you did it. Now, the reason I thought of this challenge is because we had some photos on previous challenges that we all looked at and thought, how did they do this? This is really cool. I'm thinking of the potato chips from Isabel, for one, as an example. She had a potato chip bowl and these potato chips floating around. And, uh, yeah, Gabriel, why don't you do a screen share if you can um, pull up these images. That way we can just talk and you can have your screen share going. Um, so, yeah, the, the photo was fantastic. It was a potato chip bowl with potato chips floating in midair above it, and we're all looking at it like, what did she do? Where's the green screen? You know, how did that happen? <laughs> so, and Eileen, no, you are not alone. There's noise everywhere. It's really, really distracting. Um, but speaking of noise, here's good noise. I'm going to highlight Gabriel's screen here. We've got some incredible photos from this week's challenge, and we're going to go over the, the main photos, the winners, because obviously we wanted to make sure we focused on what Ron was saying today. Uh, we're not going to go through every single photo like we have done in the past. So if you can just see uh, the screen that we have open, it's, Samantha did a little video on one of her photo, which was phenomenal. Um, of course, Chris took all kinds of bacon photos. I think she did a bacon, lettuce, and tomato this time. Um, her dog's name is Bacon. It's the coolest dog, and it just lays there as she's shooting these photos. So she takes lettuce and tomato and puts it next to the dog, and <laughs> calls it Bacon, Lettuce, and Tomato. Um, so that was funny. Bacon and eggs. There's bacon and eggs right there. Um, <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> There's bacon. So thank you, everybody, for submitting to the photos. We're going to jump right to the top three that we've picked, and we, we picked these beforehand. Um, we're going to start with a third place photo, and third place was Julie's photo of the clock. Um, maybe you can kind of pull that one up there for us. So here's the actual photograph. Excellent. And Ron, you had a question for Julie on this. <laughs> we're going to start with me, are we? Yeah. <laughs> I, I love this image. I think photographically it's really well done. Great tones. Um, I, I just I, There's a lot I like about it, but after watching... Um, I, uh, looking through, did a great job of showing the construction of the image in Photoshop. And your knowledge of Photoshop is really sound. So my question was, as a person that's ADD and OCD, is um, there's a spec beside the, 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 the minute hand that's driving me crazy. Why didn't you spot that out? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a, a light reflection, I believe, on the tip of the hand. No, uh, further back and, and just below the V. The oh, okay, yeah, that one that right one. here. <laughs> it's it just uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't. I had to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> now that being said, this is still our pick for third photo of the week. So, yeah. an mm -hmm. excellent photo. And wh what's the behind the scenes on this one? So uh, there's the original image, uh, color image. And then a uh, great behind the scenes of the tripod set up and the angle and everything, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then A plus for for yeah the whole silver effect effects pro. So the editing done in Nick. Um, so there's the, step, eh? yeah, I mean it was just yeah really 
great screenshots, good behind the scenes showing the uh, the zone system that Nick. Uh, I think Nick actually invented the zone system. So yeah, I think they that. invented it in about 1930 something. <laughs> oh wait, no, that was Ansel Adams. Right. Yeah, I heard a quote from him recently. Um, <laughs> yeah, some nice great so graduated filter there in Lightroom. So it looks like she's bouncing from Lightroom to Silver FX Pro and. Yeah, great behind the scenes, great detail, uh, great picture. Um, and by the way, she says uh, Julie says she didn't notice it until after she posted it. So, yeah, yeah. That, the, again, this is this is the kind of thing that through these challenges it opens your eyes to what's right in front of you, right? Yeah, and you get trained to it. Like as a jewelry photographer, I deal, um, you know, the, the when I go and do those shoots. Uh, a lot of diamond rings have those little claws in them. So, I, you know, shooting hundreds and hundreds of hours of macro shots of jewelry, I get super trained. So I open this up, and I immediately I see that, I see that, I see that, I see that, and you know, I'm just trained to see little fluff automatically and want to remove it. So, yeah. Mhm. Mm That's just um, you know how I'm trained. It is. And uh, what's this? Um, oh, Lori did pipe up, and she said that at times she finds photography adds pleasure to her life. Um, she wants to get better, so she forces herself to spend time on stuff like that. And uh, she also finds photography can help you slow down and appreciate life. So that's a plus that we get from photography. She, we're still getting comments coming through here, so I just had to bring that up. <laughs> and Marjorie, you asked how you can get involved in these challenges. If you join the Day Tripper Photo community on Google+, we give these challenges out right now. As soon as this challenge is over, we're done talking about it. We're going to give our new challenge for next week, and uh, you can submit them starting right after the show. So thank you for asking about that. Okay, so that was our third place photo. Gabe, thank you so much for showing that. Second place, we're going to give this one to Martin. Now, Martin might not have expected to get this, but we have to give you plenty of props for the lighting on the photo that you've made here. Um, there it is right there. There, awesome. So here's a photo that Martin did with his daughter when they were in Niagara Falls. They were up in their hotel room. Now, to the, non to the untrained eye, this might just look like a photo of his daughter in front of the window. Ron, um, maybe you can give us an idea of how difficult a shot like this is to actually make. Yeah, um, whenever you're balancing artificial and natural light sources, multiple light sources, especially something that's backlit, it's really hard to make it look like, first of all, it wasn't hit direct on from a, a hard flash, and second of all, to look like it was a cut and paste. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, I, I think he's really nailed it here. Martin's nailed it uh, by using that hair light, by using that kicker. He's he's made her appear like she's right in the scene. It's all believable. But taken something from inside a dark room and, and made it very pleasing. I don't know if anybody has tried doing this themselves with any camera, but if you use flash, you get a big reflection off the window. If yeah. you don't use flash, then the outside's really bright and the daughter inside's really dark. Getting that light balance is extremely difficult. So maybe, Gabriel, you can forward over to show how Martin did this. Oops. And kudos to him for carrying all that gear out to Niagara Falls. Yeah, I know. It's like he had a So you can see he's got the light behind for the hair light, and he's got the light in front with a little grid over that soft box. Um, and you're absolutely right. He, there's lots of gear involved here. Um, and, of course, what's the first thing that I noticed? Any ideas? The bags? No, below the bag. The shadow? The shadow from the pop-up flash oh, on the camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the photo itself was fantastic, but I guess his son Jordan took this photo and... Uh, there's a little bit of a shadow there, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> and, and Martin, next time you're going to take a photo like this, please take the time and Photoshop out the snow. <laughs> <laughs> so excellent photo by that uh, by Martin. Thank you so much for submitting. You've got second place from tonight's contest. And the overall winner, the number one photo of this photo challenge, was one of the first photos posted, and that's our good friend Samantha. Samantha Del Greco posted this, and now I picked this as the winning photo myself just because I'm an audio video guy. I love stereos, and when I heard that she took her husband's Bose speakers and chucked them on the <laughs> ground and, you know, put this stuff all over them and there was mess everywhere, I was like, yes, good for you. That was excellent. 
Apparently, you're supposed to put saran wrap on them first. <laughs> Whatever, squirrel. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <Yeah. laughs> um, yeah, no, it's just a really interesting concept, and it, the first thing is it made me want to try it. Right? Mm-hmm. Were you guys the same way when you, when you saw this? Was it like, yeah, that's something I can do? Yeah, it, it has that cool effect, right? It's like that. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, it was excellent. Very good job. And I think the technical term for what she used is, is goo. Goop or goop? Goop. She goop or goop. But I it's really not, it. not a non-Newtonian fluid. I think it's because it's cornstarch based and then yeah. yeah. It's water and cornstarch. Yeah. And yeah, I showed you. this picture to my son. He absolutely loved it. Made him giggle. He said it looks <laughs> like a like a cool blue forest. I yeah. could take pictures yeah. like this all day long. Now that I've seen this, yeah. I'm, I'm, I definitely want to try it. I can well, do this all day. The awesome or, music while you do it. Yes. Yeah, well, b- borrow your Bose speakers and try it out. <laughs> I've got them. They're right over there. I will probably actually. I've got some Yamo down in the basement. I haven't used in a while. I'll probably use those. But uh, fantastic stuff. Excellent work from everybody this week. Maybe you can show us what this actually was there, Gabriel. Oh yeah, sure. Uh... It's a video, so it'll probably not play well through the Hangout. But uh, and I know you're certainly not going to have sound because she talks through the whole thing, explains how she did it. But is it, uh, is it showing well? It's, yeah, the it's showing. showing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, she was talking about how she had to take the speaker. She thought she'd try something different this week, and she figured she would just do a video rather than stills. So then she pans over. There we go. Look at that. It's like I know what she's doing. And there's her work lights that she set up and the, the drop cloth there so she wouldn't make a big mess. Ah, and there's oh, $3,000 no. speakers! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, excellent Sorry. stuff. She turns on the sound. It started bouncing around. It started bubbling up all this goop. And uh, it's fantastic. Excellent, excellent job. <laughs> and there they are. There you can see... Uh, yeah, they're starting. Yeah. There it goes. So, thank you so much, Samantha and Martin, and Julie, and everybody else that submitted photos for this week's photo challenge. Um, excellent job. You guys are They're really making... making... It easy on us. What's that? They're not making it easy on us. These are no. fantastic. No, definitely not making it easy to judge. And uh, again, the whole concept... We've always said that Day Tripper Photo is not a very judgmental kind of community, and we like to stay that way, uh, which is why these are more of a fun challenge rather than um, mm-hmm. you win a million dollars if you win, you know, because we don't have that. So, <laughs> but thank you all so much for submitting. And this week's challenge is going to be, hmm, what's the word? Challenging for a lot of you. For those of you out there who focus on editing as your platform for making a photo look good or bad, we're going to pull that right out from under you. Because this week, leading up to next week's show, Titanfall. will be Titanfall. No. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it'll be what we love to call the Naked Photography, the Naked Photography Challenge. Um, we've done a show before called Naked Photography. It's our most viewed episode of all time, I but the absolute shortest ended. actual viewership. <laughs> so I think we have well over you know a thousand views of this show, and um, I think the average view time is thirty seconds. So. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, we come up with, didn't we come up with an acronym for the type of naked photography we're doing too? Yes, porn. Porn. Porn, which is photography of natural realism or something like that. No, natural outdoor realism. Uh, outdoor realism, that's right. And, uh, we just like to use Pawn, keywording partner. so people watch our show. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they click on and see three dudes, they turn yeah, them off. So. Right. What was that, Ron? Yeah, for 30 seconds. For 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it didn't work out for us. Oh, anyway. wait, somebody watched for 40. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the concept of naked photography is literally one camera, one lens, and a 10 foot by 10 foot area. 10 foot by 10 foot, not 10 inch by 10 inch, because we had that confusion on our last show. Um, you have to shoot in JPEG, and you cannot edit your photos. Of these photos, you have to make five images that you can put together in a slideshow that you really like. So find a 10 foot by 10 foot area, have one camera with one lens. I did this with my 50 millimeter lens that I have. Um, I can reverse it 
I can mount it normally, and I did free lensing. So I actually took it off the camera and did some free lensing, tilting the lens uh, for a different effect. So I actually did this in my washroom the first time I did it. Um, 10 foot by 10 foot, it's not even actually. I took pictures of the knobs and of the curtain and of the toilet paper roll and all these really interesting things that were very close up and it, it, it was interesting. It made me really think. It doesn't have to be a room that's 10 feet by 10 feet. You can go to the middle of a gymnasium but just pick a space that's approximately 10 feet by 10 feet. Exactly. So you can do it you know, in the middle of a Henry's store, you can do it you know, in the middle of the street, you, know, you can go anywhere, just find some place and you know, sort of pace off 10 feet by 10 feet. Yep. It's fairly straightforward, but no editing, no saving a photo that was soft, that you added black and white because you wanted it to look better, no manipulation in any way, in camera only, uh, by all means, if you want to make in-camera black and white, go ahead and do that. That's fine. But it's in-camera. It's no post-production. It's no extra lenses. It's no different perspectives. So get out there and do this, guys. Uh, we want to see two photos. You can take five. That's the idea of this challenge is to really take a lot of photos in a very confined area. So take as many photos as you want. But we want to see at least two photos posted to the community uh, for this challenge. And I hope you guys have a great time doing it. I know we're all going to do it. Uh, Ron, you are welcome to do it as well if you'd like. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how that all works out. So Let's next week, add a add a challenge on to Ron. Um, Ron, when you do it, you have to be naked. <laughs> <laughs> That's crossing a line, Darren. Crossing a line. I'll do it, but I won't shoot JPEG. I only shoot raw. <laughs> shoot raw in the raw. All right, so guys, next week's show will be the Naked Photography Show. We're going to talk about shooting with no extra stuff and how you can properly expose your shots and you know review a lot of these photos and go into all of that. Um, when can we show up at Henry's? Yeah, <laughs> after hours. After hours. <laughs> Julie, take it easy. <laughs> um, Actually, it's funny because there's a school of imaging classes going on after our store hours now. So, like today, I had to be at work until about eight o'clock, even though we were closed at six, because Martin was doing a class. And uh, so, yeah, if you want to come by at that point and do it, uh, no, just move on. Um, Eileen, they're very amazing. Yes, uh, Marjorie says if Ron does it, she will do it too. Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. The challenge has been laid. Uh, Rod says, do you need to shoot within the 10-foot square, or do you just need to stand within the 10 square? Up to you, however you want to do it. Yeah. Very good question. Very good question. Um, ooh, my comment and his naked one happened in the exact same time. <laughs> <laughs> that was a coincidental? I thought that was intentional. I understood you. <laughs> uh, Mark says, just watch for reflective surfaces when shooting naked. <laughs> And uh, G, going back to basics. That's exactly what it is, Eileen. We are going back yeah. to basics. Um, I think it's just like what Ron says. You know, you don't want to get too cluttered. You want to simplify things. So our photo challenge this week is going to help you do that. And please, and when get it done. When the weather warms up, we'll be able to do a lot more porn photography. <laughs> Photographing outdoor real nature. Porn. Yes, that's what it was. There you go. That's and it's exactly. even, it can be better if you're playing with a new MILF, uh, multi-interchangeable lens format. Mirrorless interchangeable lens format. Yeah, mirrorless. Yes. There you go, the, like, the cameras. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. Um, I'm going to squirrel here for a second. Uh, the show is almost over, so I, I'm allowed. Um, <laughs> we had a, uh, a an online community that I had posted something in relation to the MILF, and it was promptly deleted because... Yeah. They felt it was inappropriate to be mentioning um, that kind of a, a of a name in that. So yeah. I make a point whenever I can to talk about milfs now. So <laughs> <laughs> the mirrorless interchangeable lens format is a great format of camera. Right? Absolutely. What's that, Ron? Yeah, mirrorless interchangeable lens format. I'll remember exactly. that. There you go. Um, Eileen says, that's funny. I have one-to-one -one with Henry's on March 29th. Oh, okay, so make sure you keep your clothes on. Yeah. Um, understanding your Nikon. No, Henry's has some brilliant, brilliant courses. Um, it's a really great company, and they do a lot of great things. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so 
Day Tripper also has a lot of really great courses. Oh, and by the way, guys, um, April 6th is our next photography class. It's going to be a falconry session. We're having all of the birds come to us, which is different and unique. A lot of times when you're going to a falconry, you have to go there, and you have to, you know, stay there for an hour and take some pictures, and then you get to go home. With us, we have a four-hour photography class just with the birds. We have um, four different birds of prey. We have, actually, I believe it's six birds of prey, a kestrel, a red-tailed hawk, a peregrine falcon, a bald eagle, a great horned owl, and um, all kinds of other stuff. And we're having Sigma lenses there as well. So a one-hour class, four hours of shooting birds. We go back to our new training facility in Aurora, the Day Tripper Photo Academy, which we're super excited about. And uh, we're going to talk about editing and doing a photo review and all kinds of stuff back at the Academy. And it should be a blast. So there's still a few spots open. If anybody's interested, it's only 200 bucks, And it will be awesome. Uh, James asks, one lens, does that mean a prime? Well, I went with a Prime. I don't think we're going to make you use a Prime. You could use a Zoom. Um, but as long as you keep a JPEG, as long as you don't do a lot of editing and so on. Okay. Anything else to add tonight, guys? No. No? All yeah, right. Yeah, I had to unmute myself. No, no. I, th I think we're good. I think we covered a lot of territory there. Holy I would say so, yeah. It was a busy show. And we've only been talking for an hour and 20 minutes, which huh? is 20 minutes beyond what we'd hoped. But... Like you say, Ron, it's really tough to get these shows within an hour. Well, there, there is a solution. And, you know, we just make things really quiet. <laughs> Darren just muted Brian. <laughs> all right. That's better. okay. Okay, guys. Thank you all so much for being on the show tonight. Ron, thank you so much. Uh, very gracious of you to be here and to uh, give us your time. And um, hopefully we will have you back on for another show down the road. Yeah, that would be nice. And thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Okay, guys. Uh, if you want to get a hold of Darren, Darren is a brilliant real estate photographer and, of course, an excellent one-on-one -on -one instructor. And where can folks get a hold of you, Darren? Um, emails at the bottom of the page, Darren at dgvirtualtours.com. Okay. And right. is that it? Okay. Cool. Thanks, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gabriel, a... Uh, Again, wedding photographer extraordinaire. You and your wife do great things at weddings and, and events for people. Where can folks get a hold of you? Uh, they can get a hold of us at um, Gabriel at bousquetphotography.ca. And bousquet is just like bouquet, but with an S. So it's not as uh, hard to spell. as It's not as intimidating as it looks. Unless you just don't know how to spell bouquet either. So True. Um, <laughs> Ron, I know you do a lot of personal training and mentorship and so on. How can folks find out more about what you have to offer? Yeah, I'm pretty sure lower thirds, ronclifford.com. It's really easy, and my contact information is there, so you can email me. Or on G+, just type in Ron Clifford. I'll pop up um, on G+, more than anywhere else if I'm somewhere. Excellent, excellent. And Lynn Smith um, just asked us, where do you sing up? I think you meant sign up. Um, you can sign up for the Day Tripper Photo Sessions by going to www.daytripperphoto.com, D-A-Y-T-R-I-P-P-E-R-P-H-O-T-O.com. I've practiced that. Um, <laughs> so by all means, all, all of our day trips are up there, and you can register right there as well. We're going to Algonquin Park April 27th. Lots of really cool, cool things going on. If she wants uh, to join the Day Tripper community, just do a search on communities in uh, Google Plus, Day Tripper Photo. Yep. Join the community, not the group. The group is great. That came first. But when the communities came in, everything kind of migrated there, and that's where all the fun stuff is. That's where all the magic happens. All right, Eileen, good night. James, good night. Lynn, thank you so much. And um, to everybody watching and to everybody who contributes to the show, thank you all so much. We're going to say good night and a Riverdale Chief. Oh, wait, we have our quote. Thank you. We can't say Reaver Delci yet. We have our quote. Um, this quote's changed, actually. It's Titanfall, 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 Titanfall. <laughs> Somebody is distracted. Kind of goes against I'm the whole idea. focusing just on the wrong thing. <laughs> yes, okay. Here's the actual quote. One of the lessons I grew up with was to always stay true to yourself and never let what somebody else says distract you from your goals. And so when I hear about negative and false attacks, I don't really invest any energy in them because I know who I am. And that's from a young lady named... Michelle, Michelle Obama. So, very, very wise woman. Um, obviously, in power, she's pretty cool. I like her. And uh, that was an excellent quote. And that's how we're going to end the show. 
Thank you, Chris. Yeah. And to everybody, good night. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.